It's my wife's birthday, soon. And I've got a fantastic plan for her birthday present. I'm gonna take her on a holiday. Yep, that's right. We live in Joburg. We're gonna catch the train, go overnight train, so we're gonna have a little bed and sleep in it, go overnight to Cape Town. When we get to Cape Town, we're gonna stay in Cape Town for two or three days, and then we're gonna fly back to Joburg. That is such a cool present. And the best thing about that present is I share it because I go with her. <laughs> That's a clever present, I'll tell you what. But before I look at all of that, I've actually got to say, hey, this is going to cost me money, guys. Do I have enough money? So I'm going to have to look at all the money that I have coming into my bank account and all the money that goes out of my bank account to see how much I've got left over to see whether I can actually buy her this present. In fact, I shouldn't talk so loud because she might be around and hear this. So I've got to talk a little softer here. Okay. But that's the idea. Will I have enough money to buy her that present? Let's have a look here. A budget is a plan for using income to cover expenses. In other words, do I have enough money to cover my expenses? Let's have a look at some of the income and some of the expenses. All right, so income. Income is like a salary. Monthly earnings from an employer. Wages or weekly earnings coming from an employer. So you could pay, be paid monthly and we call that a salary or you could be paid weekly and we call that wages. Okay, I always say to my boss, I'm paid very weekly. Okay, like hardly anything, right? Very weekly, but not like Monday to Friday, just like week. Okay. Bad joke, bad joke. Then we can also get income from commission. In other words, how much money am I earning from selling things? So if I were to be a car dealer and I'm selling cars, you need to understand that my boss could come to me and say, you know what, I will give you 10%. Every car you sell, I will give you 10% of the value of that car. If I sell lots of cars that month, fantastic, I'm going to earn a lot of money. If I don't sell a lot of cars, I'm not going to earn a lot of money. Right, then we get profit, and that's extra money gained on sales of goods and services. We might even land up with some fees, uh, or gifts rather, where someone suddenly says, you know what, it's your birthday, happy birthday, I'm going to give you a thousand rand, like a hey, cool, that's money coming in. <coughs> Financial assistance. Someone could be saying, hey, you know what, hey, this poor O is battling. Yeah, it's like, poor guy, let's give him some extra money every month. All right, so you might have a family member, for example, and you know they're not earning very much money, and you decide, you know what, you want to help them out, you want to give them some extra money, so you're going to give them an extra 500 Rand every month. They see that as financial assistance, and it's money coming in for them. You might even get rental income for a property. So let's say you got a house, but you're not living in it because you've got another house that you're living in. That extra house that you've got, or extra little bit of um, uh, property, that could be bringing you in some money. Maybe you've got a house and outside you've got a little sh uh, uh, hut area and you're wanting to rent it out or a little uh, chalet. You're wanting to rent it out. Somebody comes in, stays in, says, we'll give you 2,000 rand a month if we can live in your little back gardens flat or your little chalet. That's money coming in, rental income for your property. Okay, then we've got expenses. Guys, we all know what expenses are, hey? They're living expenses, right? Like paying food, uh, paying for food, uh, having to buy clothing, all right? All those kind of things that you've got to pay to live. We also have different accounts that you might have. Like I said, uh, you're, you might want to be, go off to a matric dance, for example, and you want to buy a dress. And so you buy this address on account and every month you've got to pay it off. 
Telephone bill. We just had a session before this one looking at cell phone bills, having to pay those. Right. Insurance. Why do we have insurance? Well, if you've got a motor car and you're involved in an accident, you want to make sure you belong to a good insurance company that will pay you out and you won't have a headache of saying, oh, now I've got to pay for all these repairs for my car and the other car. Okay. Personal taxes, tax that you got to pay, those are expenses. Maybe you took out a loan and you got to pay that back every month. Okay. Saving, you're saving money like I am for my wife's birthday trip. Okay. So every month I've been putting money aside. That is still an expense because I can't pay for it. I can't live off it. It's not money coming in. It's money I'm putting aside, okay? Salaries and wages. Maybe you've got someone who works for you and you've got to pay them every month. If you've got a business, your business will have running expenses. So we've got income and we've got expenses. When I go further, I'm going to look at the type of income or the type of expenses. Now, we can have fixed income and fixed expenses, right? What does fixed mean? Fixed means it does not change with time. So I know that my salary for this year is going to be so much every month. It's never going to change. It's fixed, okay? I also have fixed expenses. My car, I've got to pay 1,400 Rand every month for my car. And one month I'm not going to pay 1,600 and the next month, one, every month I'm paying the same amount for my car. My rent for that whole year is going to be exactly the same. Why? Because I agreed. I will pay you 500 Rand a month to live in your back bedroom. Okay? I know every month I'm paying the 500 Rand. Whereas variable means it changes over time according to the situation. So, if I work on a commission basis, like I said, let's pretend I sell cars. I can't say at the beginning of the month, this month I'm earning so much because I don't know how many cars I'm going to sell this month. Okay, if I sell lots of cars, wow, big salary. Sell a little bit of cars, oh, little salary. Okay, so I can't say at the beginning of the month, my dear, go out and spend 10,000 Rand on a dress. Why? Because this is how much I'm earning. I actually don't know how much I'm going to earn. All depends how many people want to buy a car that month. Variable expenses are expenses that are such a change. So for example, I can't tell you right now that my petrol bill this month is going to be exactly 245 Rand and 16 cents. Why? Because I don't know the exact route I'm going to be following. I might decide to go for a nice little Sunday drive. Okay? I might, even if I'm going to work and coming back, have to follow a different route. I might go fast one day and slow another day. There might be a lot of traffic, so I'm stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, using loads of petrol. So variable means it's going to change. You know it's going to be there, but you don't quite know what it's going to be every month. Then occasional means it occurs from time to time. Okay, so maybe at the end of November, my boss comes to me and says, you know what, Pete, you've been a fantastic teacher this year. I'm going to give you a little bonus. Here's an extra 10 rand. You go and buy yourself a chocolate. Okay, then I'm going to say, cool, that is money coming in. It doesn't happen every month. It doesn't happen every year, but on the occasion, I get an extra little bit of money coming in. Or you might um, submit your taxes, and the tax man says, you know, Mr. Templeton, we're so sorry. We've charged you way too much tax. We owe you a thousand rand. I then get that coming into my account, but it's not something I'm doing, getting every month. Occasional expense might be, for example, suddenly your car breaks down, 
okay, and the engine burns out or something weird happens, the car goes into the garage and the guy says, listen sir, you now owe us 4,300 Rand. That is an occasional expense. It doesn't happen every month, but on the odd occasion, something goes wrong with my car and I've got to pay it. I don't know what that expense is. I don't know what that income is. It comes in or I've got to pay out on the odd occasion. Do we understand the difference? So fixed means I know what it's going to be and it's going to be that every month. A variable means I know I'm getting money in but I can't tell you how much or I know I'm going to pay this at the end of the month but I don't actually know the exact figure. And occasional means voila, on the odd occasion I get money coming in. Okay, so let's have a look here. There are several things you should aim for in your personal budget. It should list all the items that are needed and should try to anticipate unforeseen expenses. So, just checking for my wife. With this trip I'm planning, I know I've got to plan the price of the train ticket to Cape Town. I've got to plan the price of the accommodation. Okay? And I've got to plan the price of coming back by the aeroplane. But there are other things that might happen that I'm not aware of. Okay. So for example, here's something I never thought of. When I go, I park my car at the train station. Guys, that's going to cost me money every day that it's parked there. Ish. Forgot about that unforeseen expense. Got to take that into account. Okay, when we get there, my wife might see a fantastic dress and say, "Ah, oh, it is my birthday, and this whole trip is for my birthday. I think I should also have that dress." Unforeseen expense coming up. All right. Here's a worse thing, and heaven forbid that that should happen. Maybe I'm walking along, kick my toe. It gets totally mashed against the pavement. Got to go to the clinic. They got to fix it up. And suddenly they say, sir, for that little 10 minutes that we spent with you, you owe us 3,400 rand. Unforeseen circumstance. So all these things need to be taken into account. In fact, when your parents plan their budget every month, they should say, let's keep money aside just for in case something goes wrong. We hope nothing goes wrong, but in case something goes wrong, let's keep money aside. Okay, it should be realistic so that you can stick to it. So I'm not going to say, you know what, we're getting on a train and it's going to cost me five rand. And then when we get there, we're going to live in accommodation, and that's going to cost me another five red. Then we're going to get an aeroplane, and we're going to fly back, and that's going to be another five. Guys, it's going to cost me a heck of a lot more than five rand. Okay, so be realistic with your budget, because if you're not realistic, you're not going to be able to live by it or stick to it. Okay, it should focus on high priority items, essential items such as food and health care. If too much of the income is spent on non-essential items and not on savings, your budget is going to become problematic in the future. Okay, so I walk down the shop or, or in a shopping center. I walk past the shop and there it is. Okay, the shirt I've always wanted, but it cost 500 rand. And I never spend 500 Rand on a shirt. I think that's crazy. But I've got to have that shirt. And so I go in and I buy the shirt. Okay? Then I keep going. And now I get to the shop that sells the food. And I go in and I say, okay, we need bread, we need milk, we need this, we need that. And suddenly realize I don't have the money. Okay? What's happened? I focused on things that are non-essential. In other words, I didn't really need that shirt. But I bought it anyway, whereas I actually did need the bread and milk and should have bought that first. Okay, um, an ideal budget should include a plan to save money for the future or to pay off debts to allow for savings in the following month. It should be balanced. If your income is less than your expenses, then you need to revise it. 
until the two sides balance. If your income is more than your expenses, then you should plan to save the extra money. All right, we're going to look at an example here. We don't have a lot of time, so let's just skim through it. Douglas wants to travel from Cape Town to Durban to visit his cousin. His parents said that they can give him 500 rand towards a trip. He decides to draw up a budget to determine how much money the trip will cost. His uncle has offered to give him a lift home, so he only needs to budget for the trip to Durban. He has saved 2,000 rand, saved in his bank account. He wants to have some spending money left over when he gets there. He phones Rainbow Buses to find out how much it'll cost to travel from Cape Town to Durban. And they give him two options. Option one, leave Saturday morning and travel straight to Durban. The trip costs 1,200 rand and he will need to pay for three meals at 30 rand per meal. Option two, leave Saturday morning and travel to Plettenberg Bay first. The trip only cost 400 rand. He can then catch a bus on Sunday morning to Durban. This trip will cost 500 rand. If he does this though, he needs to find a place to stay on Saturday night and budget for three extra meals, estimated at 30 rand each. He estimates that a backpacker's lodge would be the cheapest place to stay at 200 rand a night. Right, so now let's quickly draw a budget for Douglas. Let's have a look here. There's income, there's expenses. Money from parents, he got 500 rand. What is that? That's income towards his holiday. Okay, so let's write that down straight away. He's got 500 rand. He's got savings of 2,000 rand. That's income towards his holiday, isn't it? So he's got 2,000 rand. Bus fare. The bus fare was 1,200 rand. Meals on the bus. And that's an expense, eh, hey, folk? Meals on the bus. He had to pay for three meals at 30 rand each. That is 90 rand. Accommodation's not going to cost him anything. Why? Because he's going on a bus straight to Durban, uncle paying for the accommodation. Total running of the money he has. He has 500 rand. He adds another 2,000. He's now got 2,500 rand. He then has an expense of 1,200. So he's left with 1,300 rand. Another expense of 90 rand. So he's left with 1,210 rand. That's how much money he's left with. With option two, it was a little bit different. He still had the income of 500, still had the income of 2,000, but remember his bus fare was slightly different. He paid 500 and 400 rand, which came to a total of 900. But then he had to pay for extra three meals and he had to pay for accommodation because he was stopping over at Plettenberg Bay. But that's basically how uh, Douglas has had to work out the budget. And then he works out which would be the better option with him. We've run out of time, so let's just summarize this very quickly. And we're going to say the following. In summary, in this segment, we've covered the following. We've looked at how to set up a travel budget. And we've also looked at the concepts of budgets within our everyday living. Folk, it's been great. Remember, budgets are an important thing that come up in uh, examinations as well. Got to know how to do it. All right. We'll chat again soon on the TV screen. Until then, keep safe and keep learning. Chat soon.